I think in a lot of ways, I mean, the, the, the one thing at every position, you're, you're, like, you're looking for that uh, size potential, speed potential, you're saying, because you're evaluating guys as obviously 17, 18 year old guys, you know, kind of where they can, can, can go from, uh, you know, uh, from high school ranks to college ranks. And, and some guys obviously have a, a higher uh, starting point. And he's one of those guys that, uh, uh, you know, stands out one, one on film, has some track times to kind of confirm what you see on film. Um, but that, that, that's what you're uh, attempting to build at every position of your defense. You know, the, the you know, long athletes that, that, that can run. You never want to compromise uh, the speed element of things. Uh, and so Bryson is one of those guys that we really think possesses, you know, that, that uh, you know, both those, you know, main skill sets. Um, you know, he's got you watch a practice and, and you, you're, you're trying to find the DB and, and uh, oh, goodness, you know, it, it almost looks like a, uh, you know, an undersized D end or something like that, you know, just from, a, you know, compared to other high school guys, you know, but, but certainly moves and plays uh, the way we like him to. So we're excited about Bryson. Alex, I'm curious about the two Juco defensive linemen, especially Winfrey. How much did he set the tone for, for that class and getting people to buy into to what you were doing and how important were bringing those two guys in, especially where you all stand defensively? Well, I mean, certainly, certainly a position of need just, you know, as, as you go through, uh, you know, our, our depth chart, um, you know, through 2019 transition into 2020, that that's the spot where you kind of have the uh, the most planned attrition in, in terms of the the senior class uh, as, as they move on past this. And so there's there a major need, obviously, in that in that spot. And and so as you look at you know from a junior college standpoint, you're 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 always evaluating with the best uh, available talent. I mean, so you're you're not always willing to you know if, if it's a regardless of position, if, if there's a guy that can come in and start on your defense, you're uh, in the business of recruiting those individuals. But but certainly that was just a spot um, there, there's kind of a, a gap between the, those seniors and then some young uh, some young guys that uh, some which have played a little bit for us and some, some which uh, have not and so you know how do you fill that gap and so uh, you know with, with uh, you know Perron in, in particular as, as one of the first guys to kind of jump on board you know it really uh, uh, you know fills that need but oh by the way you know it, it's it's not just okay let's, let's get a big body throw pl plug them in there you know you're talking about two talented guys that uh, we think possess those attributes that uh, um, you know we're looking for in defense linemen. You know, not not just the, the size element of things, but uh, you know, a quick first step and the ability to rush passers uh, and that. So that uh, uh, was good. But but you know, really to your point, I will say this: you know, the the, the, the you start recruiting these guys when you get the job in January. You sign them in December. There's about an eight month period of time where you're telling them all the things you're going to do. And the problem is when you when you're in that 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 phase and you don't have uh, you know, kind of the tangible evidence to say that you're going to get these things done at the University of Oklahoma, or these are the individuals that have, have gotten it done at the University of Oklahoma in this defense, you kind of turn yourself into everybody else. You're, you're just, you're just chatter. You're just another coach selling, uh, your, your salesman. You know, and, and so in any event, uh, you know, for some of those guys to, to, to buy into that vision uh, when there wasn't as much tangible evidence uh, kind of speaks to, to obviously the job as a, as a coaching staff, but that certainly to them as individuals in, in terms of understanding kind of where this thing was going. And then it, it's nice now kind of transition from the 2019 to 2020, which would be the 21 class, is that, um, you know, you got a little bit more evidence in terms of the things that you're, you're selling kind of leads to what I, I was going to ask. How different is the response now when you talk to 2020, but also 2021 sure. kids compared to when you were saying these same things in spring, but had nothing to show for it? Well, and, and it's, it's obviously a real positive, you know, and then and you talk about a, a program with the stature of Oklahoma. Uh, you know, everyone's going to take your phone call. It's at least that first one. There's a good bet you're going to get them on campus. If you, you know, if you, if you, we listed on this board, which obviously we won't and can, but but all the all the guys that that walk through these doors, it's the who's who of student athletes uh, in, in that in that 2020 class. Um, and so, in any event, uh, continue to move forward. Now that you got more more tangible evidence, you know, in, in some some respects, a guy comes through. Okay, got you, coach. Got you, coach. But then they go to, uh, you know, every every single kid that you recruit. Oh, by the way, he's got just about everybody else in the country that they can they can choose from. And and if, if they those individuals have not not just uh, you know obviously the uh, um, and, and most don't. Uh, the, the the evidence over a long period of time, like an Oklahoma football does, but but in a in a more uh, uh, immediacy of this deal in terms of the amount of NFL players, 
you know, that, that they've produced and, and the, the, the uh, results on, on the field. And so in any event, uh, no, move, moving forward, uh, certainly we, we, we got it. And then we, and it's the, the next step for, is for us to produce those, those individuals. Uh, but, but, but evidence is good. I mean, you're, you're, you're constantly trying to find those things that separate you between you and your competition. Uh, and we got, we got a, a, a big time one in terms of this logo, this facility, this, this campus, this school. Um, but, to, but, but you're trying to find that next thing. And obviously uh, results matter. Coach, Brendan Walker, obviously an in-state kid. How big was it to get him as an in-state kid, and what do you like about him and, and the way he plays? I mean, I, th I think in a perfect world, that, I mean, you draw, draw a circle around Norman, Oklahoma, and make that circle as big as you want, and try to get him within that the, that uh, that that radius, and, and not that you would ever limit yourself. I mean, the biggest thing about Brendan is I, I think he's a talented kid uh, that that can um, have, have a uh, an impact on our defense. I think his position flexibility, you know, again, size standpoint, uh, speed standpoint, a uh, guy really in that second level as you go through the Mike linebacker, Will linebacker, Rush linebacker positions. Kind of, I think he could do uh, any and all, all all three of those. Um, and, and so, like you said, a, a local a local guy, and you got to be right on those guys, you know, because their their experience is going to uh, have a lot to, to do with uh, um, you know kind, kind of relationships moving it forward and all those things. So you, you want to make sure uh, as, as you go through it that that, that that's not go out to you know, name the state uh, that, that 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 that's not Oklahoma and say okay, let's go get him when you got a good one in state that uh, uh, checks those boxes. So we're excited about. Him. Alex, you got you cool with an LSU question? Sure. While, we're, while you're here, uh, I think they uh, pile up 500 even against Auburn yardage. Uh, mm -hmm. Scored just 23 points, but they gained 500 yards, which includes the end of the fact that I don't know if anyone's actually slowed them down, let alone stopped them. Is, is this does this game come down to make the plays when you can? That they're going to move it, do what you can in the red zone, do what you can on you know, takeaways. I know you've hit sure. that all year, but sure. but especially in this situation with this kind of offense. Well, I, I think one, you know, uh, you know, you've got to be respectful of the fact that they are they are going to make plays, and, and all of a sudden they're going to take a, a Saturday off, um, and and so what we have to make sure of is that that we make our fair share. What's what's that look like? Does it look like a, you know, a, a tackle for loss in the backfield, a possible sack, a, a takeaway, all those things? We we you you can't walk into uh, to to or excuse me, walk out of a stadium and say we didn't make uh, plays tonight. You know, and obviously in at, at this. Uh, on this stage, uh, with with, with uh, so much on the line, and certainly against such a, a quality opponent, um, but you also can't be a prisoner to to the sticks. You can't be a prisoner to that first down marker and to to insinuate that every possession is, is somehow going to be you know in the in the vicinity of nine yards or less. You know they they've they've done a tremendous job over the course of the season versus a, a, a quality schedule. That would suggest that it's a very difficult offense to stop. You're talking about the Heisman Trophy winner at quarterback. You know, they said, uh, you know, Belindikoff winner at uh, receiver, which I immediately asked which one. You know, and so that tells you something when, the, when, when uh, the, there's, there's talent across the board, talent to the tailback. Um, and, and so in any event, uh, uh, you talk about a challenge of all challenges for, for defensive coaches and defensive players, and we'll work daily to, uh, to, to meet that challenge. Uh, lots been talk about the recruiting Calvin. Of course, you guys involved in the Big 12 championship game, and there's positives in it, but there's also some negatives. What can you do? Is there anything? I mean, you'll do some things different. Any? What will you do? Say, if you're in the same situation next year. Well, I, I think you know the the way this calendar fell with everybody having two bye weeks and where the Big 12 championship was is really just allowed one week on the road in December. And I think what you have to do is you have got to almost anticipate that as you go through the course of a, a calendar year is, is making sure that you know what what you uh, are saving for December. Uh, you know, it is probably an in, inaccurate way to kind of look at your calendar. You got you to say, okay, th these these visits, for instance, have to take place uh, during the course of your season, which puts again, you're uh, kind of a busy time over that. Um, the flip side is, okay, the spring. You know, now now it's available to us to bring these guys in for official visits in the spring, all the way up into June. But then there's a stretch between, you know, you bring a guy in in June, he really likes your campus. Well, there's six months until he gets a chance to sign on the dotted line. All the different places you can go between now and then. So that poses, uh, a, you know, kind of unique challenges that way. And so, uh, you know, I, the minute I start talking about it, I kind of bring up more issues. I, I don't think there's a silver bullet behind it in terms of exactly how uh, to, to, to manage it. I think the, the positive thing, you know, we, you said, you know, the, the, the best recruiting tool uh, we had when the other people were on the road as we prepared for the Big 12 championship game was to win the Big 12 championship and it's a pretty good tool and then you know as you transition uh, forward but what, what, what it prevents is the amount of times in living rooms 
you know, and so you're, you're, you really got to do a great job from a release, uh, relationship standpoint uh, before the month of December, whereas uh, long ago, I, mean, I guess it wasn't that long ago, a few years ago, where, you know, you had the, you're in the home the first week in December, the second week in December, you know, three more times in January, and you're, you know, uh, to the point where the, you know, the families are almost getting sick of seeing you. You just don't have that anymore. Um, so in any event, the, the, I guess the moral of the story is win ball games. That's your greatest uh, tool and selling point. But uh, you got to make sure you do a great job relationship-wise between phone calls, FaceTimes, and all those things, and get them on campus uh, in, in, the, in the months preceding December. What has uh, Marcus Stripling's development been like this year? And uh, does, does he seem like somebody that you can get contributions from? Yeah, I, mean, yeah, I, I think because, you know his practice uh, has uh, is steadily improved. I, th I think he's a guy that uh, uh, certainly we're excited about. I think his best football is in front of him. He, he does have a, a, a element of speed um, that that uh, it is brings a lot to that position. Uh, the physicality that that uh, is is different in, in college versus uh, high school is always a transition. Anytime you're talking about guys on your defensive front, and so that that's the hardest. The hardest transition is for those guys because there's just a different animal going against a 300-pound guy over and over and over again. And so that's something that uh, he continues to work through, understanding the defense and all those things. But he's pro certainly progress is being made. He's finding uh, some time on the field and, and, and something that we'll continue to look to get more of. We hear from coaches you know, about players flash. Have you seen – those moments from him this year, and if you remember one, uh, would you share it? You know, I, I, you're going back to even the Houston game. You know, just just coming off the ball, flying off the football. I think it was a play you know, that wasn't necessarily made in the backfield, but you just saw that uh, that snap off the ball, and you see that uh, again, uh, probably more in practice right now than what we've seen in games. But and, and so much of that two ties in just sort of the trust standpoint is making sure that guys are number one where they're supposed to be when they're supposed to be there, combined with. You know the, the the speed out of what what play he could be making was well, there's, there's a good chance he's not going to make that play if he's not where he's supposed to be and so in any event uh, uh, he he is steadily improving the guy that we're awfully excited about. Eric Bailey, Alex, uh, what's it like having three weeks to prepare for an opponent after going the two the week week grind and then also does Joe Burrow remind you of any quarterback that you, type of quarterback that you coached against over the years? Yeah, it, it, it uh, you know, because going back to the recruiting element of things, you know, really after the Big 12 championship, it was on, on the road recruiting for, for, for the week. I mean, you're gone. I mean, you didn't get a chance to come back even to the building. It, it's hit the road for all those things we mentioned. You got to get in homes that night and you got to roll. And so, you know, that, that week, not to d describe it as a wash from a preparation standpoint, got, you know, certainly our players are in here watching film and all those things with Coach Wyatt on the weight room. And so you steal some time that way, but just in terms of a true prep week, uh, it, it's kind of uh, kind of comes and goes because of the uh, uh, the recruiting element of things, which then turns this week into you know in, in a lot of ways just where the calendar falls. It's kind of like the, the bye week sequence. So so you know as we got back in the in the building this past weekend is is okay now you know do you treat it fully like a bye week? You know how, how do you prepare that way? And so it's a unique uh, unique calendar that way, and it doesn't allow you you know kind of that sigh of relief after you know normally after a signing day you kind of take a breather. Uh, maybe for an evening, and, and, and we, we obviously don't have that, uh, you know, with, with the stakes so high, and so challenged that way. You know, with Joe, you know, I happened to be at Ohio State the spring, you know, last spring he was at Ohio State, and so I, I, I know Joe, um, and, and uh, talented guy, you know, and, and saw that firsthand, and, and, you know, the ability to, to move the pocket, extend plays, to throw on the run, and, and then those. Uh, you know, with those attributes, what ends up happening, you know, you just you, you imagine being an offensive coordinator, the confidence that you have that you can't call a bad play. And then all of a sudden it, it uh, uh, can, can get real scary and it has in, in, in terms of uh, for defenses. And so, um, you know, I think about Sam Darnold in years past, you know, uh, I, and, and I'm certainly a Fl Joe Flacco years and years ago uh, were guys that, uh, you know, you saw on film and they immediately, it doesn't take a whole lot of uh, many clips where you just kind of get wild by them. And and, and uh, so no, he he's certainly in that uh, in that category, elite. Okay, we got time for one more, Brandon Brown. Yeah, can you talk about Brandon Walker a little bit and just how versatile he is because he's an outside inside type of guy that you all signed. And and, and that's that's the term I would use. You know, just just being versatile that way. You know, having the, having the ability to to do a number of things on our defense. You know, he he already you know uh, possesses a size uh, aspect of things that uh, you know for 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 his age, uh, you know is, is is something that that we envision being uh, kind of a, a separator. Kind of as he as he comes on campus in that six three range and then and already in that two hundred forty 
pound range and moves well. Um, and so, no, you, you, th those are the type of guys that, uh, you know, in a lot of ways, you can't have enough of because they, they can do so much for you in your defense.